Our scripture reading this morning comes from Mark chapter 1, verses 14 to 20. Now after John had been taken into custody, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of God and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. As he was going along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net in the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. Going on a little further, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and, his, and John, his brother, who were also in the boat, mending the nets. Immediately he called to them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and went away to follow him. This is the word of God for the people of God. So in our scripture today, we find the beginning of the ministry of Jesus Christ. John the Baptist had been arrested, and he was now in prison. John being the one sent to prepare the way, his work was now done. And we find Jesus collecting some of the young men who would become the apostles. And what I've always found remarkable about this scripture is that Simon, who would become Peter, Andrew, James, and John, just walk away from what they are doing and begin to follow Jesus. Now, can you imagine if someone walked into the church today or you were walking downtown minding your own business and a stranger came up to you and said, hey, you, yeah, you, come on, follow me. What would your reaction be? Do you think you'd follow them? I'm guessing we would all answer this question with the resounding no, what are you crazy? I'm not going to follow some stranger. But essentially, that is what happens here. However, there is no doubt in my mind that these young men were led by the Spirit to follow Christ. And they must have been able to see that he was someone special. And perhaps if they didn't realize he was the Messiah right then, they would ultimately. But either way, they take a leap of faith and follow him. And from that point on, their lives no longer lack for purpose or meaning. See, now they are committed to following Jesus and spreading his gospel. So I want to tell you a story. And I know that usually my stories are based on things that happen in my life and my family, but that's not the case today. So I want to tell you a story about Buster Douglas. And if you're unfamiliar with who Buster Douglas uh, was, and I, I believe he's still alive, so is, would be correct. Buster Douglas was a heavyweight boxer. And in 1990, he was scheduled to fight Mike Tyson, which I'm sure you know who he is, for the heavyweight championship of the world. But maybe you don't remember what Mike Tyson was like in 1990, or maybe you just don't care about boxing at all, and that's okay as well you'll still understand the story. See, in 1990, Mike Tyson was 23 years old. His record was 37 wins to zero losses with 33 knockouts on his record. And his knockouts were not just kind of messing around with people for 10 rounds and then tiring them out and putting them out in the 10th round. He was knocking people out within the first few minutes of the first round, within few seconds of the fight starting. And see, to me, and maybe even now today, he was easily the scariest person on the planet in 1990, and maybe still again today. Buster Douglas was a journeyman fighter, and he was a 42 to one underdog going into this fight. There was absolutely nobody who believed that Buster Douglas could beat Mike Tyson, except for Buster Douglas. And more importantly, his mother. 
You see, while Buster was training for this fight, his mother became ill. And she was only 46 at the time. But she would talk to Buster daily, telling him she believed in him and that he was going to win this fight. And Buster began to believe in himself, too. He began to think and to train as though he could beat Mike Tyson. Now, a month before they were scheduled to fight, Buster's mother passed away. But before she passed away, she made a Buster promise that he was going to go in and he was going to fight Mike Tyson and that he was going to win. You see, Buster Douglas found his why for being. He wasn't just fighting for himself. He was fighting to honor the memory of his mother. And what a powerful reminder of the things we can conquer when we are properly motivated. And in case you don't know, Buster Douglas went on to hand Mike Tyson his first loss in that fight, knocking him out in the process. And this was perhaps the greatest upset since David versus Goliath. But it was due to the dedication that he had and his belief in finding his reason for training so hard. And you may think, well, perhaps Buster Douglas was such a great fighter that he just overcame Mike Tyson that night. Well, in his fight previously, just so you are aware of the whole story, Buster had actually quit. He had given up on the fight, not being knocked out, simply said no more and walked away. What a change in him. But what does this mean for us? Well, just like the apostles and just like Buster Douglas, we all have to find our why. We have to find our reason for living. We have to find our reason for getting out of bed in the morning. And we as a people, no matter who you are, you have to have something that you can point to as that driving force in your life. Now, as Christians, our driving force or our why for being is right there in front of us. Our why can be to spread the gospel of Jesus, to do our utmost to help others to come to know him. After all, it is what we are called to do, to go and make disciple of all the nations. However, when we look at it from that level, Boy, it can be difficult for us to pick a spot to begin. After all, all the nations is a pretty large thing to try and undertake, right? So what are we to do? Well, we need to think about the areas in our life where we find our passion. The things that we simply love to do. You see, we have our why, but we need to find a way to pursue that why with passion. How can we take those things that we love and use them to further the goals that we have as a people of faith? You know, I've said it before, and I will continue to say it. I am so happy with the churches of this parish and the way that they have continued to find new ways to reach out to the people of the communities during this pandemic. It would be much easier and quite honestly, much safer if we were to just focus inward on ourselves. However, you all have been faithful and you continue to serve the Lord outside of these walls. But my question for you to consider it is this, how can we do more? Oh, I'd love to stand up here and tell you that I have a hundred new ideas for things that I think we should be doing as a church. And I'd love to set forth my agenda for you and discuss our current ministries and how they can be improved or the new ones that I think we should start. But I'm not going to do that. You see, unless we find a way to connect our passions with serving in our ministries, they will most likely fail. So what I'm asking you, as the people of this church, to think about is this. What are the things that you are passionate about? 
what are the things that you've always wanted to see this church do for ministry? Where do you think we can go? And what can we do to make the greatest impact in our area? How do we live into the why of our life, our need to take the gospel to others, and our need to serve our fellow man in a way that allows us to pursue our passions? You see, the apostles didn't just have a why for living and then do nothing. They didn't just go and follow Jesus, and then that's all they did. They pursued the spreading of the gospel with passion for the rest of their lives. That, brothers and sisters, is what we are called to do as well. We are to pursue the spreading of the gospel of Jesus Christ in service to others with a passion. For me, the one verse that has always stuck in my heart comes from James chapter 2, verse 17. And it is, faith without deeds is dead. And it's always been a constant source of inspiration for me to remember that it's not enough for me to just express my faith. It's not enough for me just to declare my faith. But I have to be willing to act upon my faith. And that verse can be read two ways, right? If you don't perform deeds, then your faith is dead. Or, the way that I like to read it, my faith is alive through the deeds that I perform for Jesus Christ. So if you have not found your why in this life yet, if you don't know how the service of Jesus Christ can open up your heart to a life of purpose and fulfillment, I'd love to talk to you about it more. I'm always available via phone, and uh, this is probably more likely for those viewing on the internet, but you can give me a call, 570-259-3728, or email me at elights at susumc.org. And I'd be happy to meet with you and talk to you about this. So as we go forth this week, my challenges for you are these. Thinking about what is one thing that you've always wanted this church to do for ministry? What is one thing that you yourself have always wanted to do in your ministry? And how can we make these things happen? If you have anything that you think we should be doing and you feel passionate about it, please let me know so that we as a church can find ways to support you and begin that ministry together. Amen.